Well, a disturbing development on the border crisis. Wait until you hear this. The Director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement confirms that more than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been caught at the border and then released into the United States. The letter here tells the tale. Hello, I'm John Roberts in Washington. You believe this, Sandra? Which means they are here, and um, this is just an unbelievable development. I'm Sandra Smith in New York. Good to be with you, John. This is America Reports. Let's get right to Bill Malugin. He's got this news for us. He's live out of Douglas, Arizona right now, uh, where Vice President Kamala Harris is set to visit later this afternoon. Bill, the details of this news. What do you have? Yeah, and Sandra, bear with me. We just got these numbers moments ago, but uh, it, it, it's a jaw dropper to say the least. So to set the stage here, let me just explain what these numbers mean. ICE has something called a non-detained docket. Essentially what that is, is it means migrants who were encountered by DHS but are no longer in federal custody. So who's on this non-detained docket? It's illegal immigrants who were caught and released at the border, released with the court date years away. They're in immigration proceedings combined with illegal immigrants who have already been ordered, deported from the country by a judge, but are still here roaming the country. So keep that in mind, this non-detained docket. Uh, according to a letter that the acting director of ICE just sent to Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez, uh, on ICE's non-detained docket, they're currently tracking 425,000 uh, non-citizens who have been convicted of a crime. Of that number, over 13,000 non-citizens have convictions for homicide and are on the non-detained docket, meaning they're roaming the country right now. On top of that, there are another 15,811 non-citizens convicted of sexual assault who are roaming the country right now on ICE's non-detained docket. It doesn't stop there. Those are convictions. The ICE director also says there are currently just under 1,900 non-citizens on the non-detained docket who have pending homicide charges who are roaming the country and another 4,250 non-citizens who have pending sexual assault charges who are roaming the country on the non-detained docket. So people's eyes might be glazing over right now with all the numbers we just threw at you. Just to put it in a nutshell right here, what we've learned from the acting ICE director via this letter to Congressman Tony Gonzalez is right now there are over 13,000 illegal aliens convicted of homicide who are roaming the United States right now. There are another 15,811 illegal aliens roaming the country right now who have been convicted of sexual assault. And there are even more who are facing charges for homicide and charges for sexual assault. So this just goes to show, guys, the non-detained docket has exploded under the Biden administration to over, I believe it's 7.3 million. They're anticipating it could hit 8 million by the end of the years. But uh, looking at the numbers on this letter right here, there are currently over 600,000 non-citizens on ICE's non-detained docket who are either convicted, or excuse me, 600,000 non-citizens on this non-detained docket who are roaming the country right now. Of that, 425,000 have already been convicted of crimes. 222,000 are pending crimes. And again, the most serious crimes we just told you about, over 13,000 convicted of homicide, over 15,000 convicted of sexual assault. And honestly, that is not a surprise to hear given these horrible headlines we keep seeing popping up in multiple parts of the country almost every day now of a horrible sexual assault or a murder or another violent felony committed uh, by an illegal alien who is often caught and released from custody. And the, the jaw dropper here too, guys, is all these numbers we just rattled off, they don't even account for the nearly 2 million gotaways who have crossed our border under the Biden administration. Those almost 2 million gotaways, they were never encountered by DHS. They snuck in, they were never caught by Border Patrol, they were never encountered by ICE. There's no record of them, so they have nothing to do with the numbers I just rattled off to you. These are just the numbers of people that ICE has already encountered, that Border Patrol has encountered, that DHS knows who they are. And we just saw those horrible stories in Nantucket the other day. ICE ran a week-long operation in Nantucket, and in a single operation in a 48-hour span, they arrested two Salvadoran illegal aliens who, who came into the country as gotaways and were arrested for 
child rape on Nantucket. They got a Brazilian guy who was arrested for uh, sexually assaulting a Nantucket resident, and then a Guatemalan guy who was previously deported who was arrested for sexually assaulting a Nantucket resident. So we keep seeing all these headlines about migrant crime popping up in different cities all over the country. This right here is the first time we have ever seen specific numbers as to who and what ICE is tracking when it comes to convicted criminals who have crossed the border at some point and are either supposed to be deported or are going through their immigration proceedings but are not in ICE custody right now and are roaming the country. So uh, I'll, I'll ping it back to you guys, but some pretty, some pretty jaw-dropping numbers that we are still going through uh, as we speak right now. So, Bill, this, this letter that was sent from the acting director of ICE to uh, Congressman Tony Gonzalez of, of Texas, it responds to an inquiry that Gonzalez sent him back in March. I just talked to Gonzalez a moment ago, and he's going to be joining us at the top of our next hour. He's surprised that he ever heard back at all. But what's interesting is in this letter, the acting director says, quote, ICE recognizes that some jurisdictions are concerned that cooperating with federal immigration officials will erode trust with immigrant communities and make it harder for law enforcement to serve those populations. However, sanctuary policies can end up shielding dangerous criminals who often victimize those same communities. I mean, that would appear to be, from the acting director of ICE, a tacit acknowledgement here that sanctuary policies are endangering the public. 